going to be making reference to Prince Charles's famous monstrous carbuncle speech as an illustration of what has happened to him in the intervening time between 1984 when he made the speech and now. Uh, and that involves a certain woman whom I shall not name, uh, mostly because I don't know quite what she is actually called. Right, so before I carry on with that, I'll tell you I'm Granny Opterix. I'm on YouTube, Rumble, Bitshoot and Minds. All the links to those other channels are in the description below. And if I disappear from YouTube, you'll have to have note of one of those. All right, so the, the other thing is uh, please like, uh, share and subscribe. And again, YouTube, if you are subscribed to me on YouTube, there's a, a better than even chance, as I'm being given to understand, that the subscription just disappears. So check your subscription. And they tell me that that like is quite important for the algorithm, so please do that and you can also help me financially buy me a coffee or again in the description you'll find links to a couple of more sites where you can donate okay so let's get back to prince charles's carbuncle uh in 1984 they the national gallery said it on trafalgar square said it needed an extension and they invited uh, uh, submissions from various architects and they came up with uh, the, the one they decided on was this, which was hypermodern. There's the National Gallery down there, completely dwarfed by this complex here. Before the final approval, Prince Charles happened to be giving a speech to the uh, Architects Association, the, uh, uh, crikey, what's it called? The Royal Institute of British Architects. Anyway. I don't know whether he asked to be able to give the speech or whether it just happened. But this is what he said. What then are we doing to our capital city now? What have we done to it since the bombing during the war? What are we shortly to do to one of its most famous areas, Trafalgar Square? Instead of designing an extension to the elegant facade of the National Gallery, which complements it and continues the concept of columns and domes, it looks as if we may be presented with a kind of municipal fire station, complete with the sort of tower that contains the siren. I would understand better this type of high-tech approach if you demolished the whole of Trafalgar Square and started again, with a single architect responsible for the entire layout. But what is proposed is like a monstrous carbuncle on the face of a much loved and elegant friend. That line there caught the public's imagination and within a very short time, the approved plan was de-approved and another plan was taken up. Now, a lot of people have said in their terror, they chose something comparatively bland and that the rest of London has followed suit with a lot of rather bland and unadventurous architecture. Well, I wouldn't exactly call this un unadventurous. Um, mind you, I have to tell you, my opinion, bad architecture. When you've got a bow front like that, you can't change offices round. The furniture doesn't fit squarely unless you have specially made furniture to fit and all the rest of it. So I don't think that's really all that good, but it, it looks good. And there's a big problem with architects doing things that look good and don't actually function. However, that's another matter. What I'm talking about is that at one time in his life, Prince Charles was a trendsetter. He said things that flew in the face of conventional wisdom. When architects wanted to do this to the National Gallery, he stepped in and said something. Uh, he also went his own way in the Duchy of Cornwall, where he instituted very... Um, very strict ideas about local architecture and uh, and local materials and local look. He didn't want Britain to be covered by a rash of 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 red brick 1970s and 80s monstrosities. And indeed, his example actually changed 
British architecture. And mostly for the good, because, yeah, some more imaginative stuff might not have been built, but it did restrain some of the worst excesses of the 80s. And anyone who's seen a, a 1970s or 1980s shopping centre, which was done in the modern style and how, how terribly dreary they look now with all that red brick and the, you know, the brutalist concrete and all, concrete and all the rest of it, uh, will know that if if your town centre was saved from something like that, then indeed it was saved. Now, that was Prince Charles uh, before he got woke. And uh, the point about the royal family, which you, you have to understand if you're in America, do you remember that, um, that scene? And wasn't it in um, Independence Day where the, the invaders get what they... A, a substitute for the president in the Oval Office and they tell him to kneel and he kneels straight away and then they say right we know you're not the president no president of the United States would kneel so readily to an invader well that's how we feel about our royal family except in America it's a bit different because the president is also part of the armed forces. I mean, it's supposed to be the commander. He's called the commander in chief, isn't he? So when something like um, Afghanistan happens, the, uh, the route from Afghanistan, that's a direct humiliation of the president that wouldn't have happened if the same thing had happened to British troops in like Dunkirk, uh, because the king isn't actually in charge of the army, although he does have the medals and the uniform and all the rest of it. It's not quite the same thing. But the, 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 there's a basic similarity. And as most Americans would take it very much to heart, even, even if they don't like the present president, most would take it very much to heart if they saw the president being humiliated because that is the state that's being attacked. Everybody in it, every loyalist is being humiliated by that action. So that's the way we feel about our royal family being humiliated and calumnied quite. Uh, that's why I don't think the Harkles are going to uh, succeed in their in their uh, attempts to destroy the royal family, mostly because the British people don't like their royal family being destroyed. It stands for the country. Uh, we're very fortunate in republics. You know, if somebody takes over the republic and, um, and gets rid of the president, puts another president there, hardly anything has changed. You're still running up the flag, which is the national symbol, and you're still saluting it. But with the royal family, it's a lot more difficult to replace. So you can see how, how thoroughly part of Britain that royal family is. And, and when we see our king sitting uh, and, and forcing, probably forcing, or at least leaning on uh, one of his most loyal servants or his mother's most loyal servants, uh, forcing an apology to somebody who, as it turns out, might not be quite as honest as she at first seemed. And nobody seems to have gone into this before this meeting happened. Most British people feel humiliated. And the royal family didn't need to do that. They could have made some investigations, couldn't they? I mean, there are investigations going on now, and as uh, I've, I've quoted the Lotus Eaters before, there is a uh, an anonymous person, and I suspect anonymous for safety reasons, an anonymous person who has been digging into the uh, the organisation run by this person, whom I won't name because I don't know what she's actually called, and uh, finding some quite nasty stuff because if money was taken out of the council and the charity commission for the taking care of victims of domestic abuse that didn't exist or that weren't being taken care of then that means that money isn't going to people who really would be using it to look after battered women and their displaced children.
So this is really serious. And to see a photograph of, uh, yeah, uh, two ladies, uh, no, two females, one of whom is a lady, uh, in the palace, one of them apologising to the other, I regarded that as a humiliation and it shouldn't have happened. Now, if, if there really had been an incident, then yes. But it seems like there hadn't. And especially with somebody who might actually be a criminal, surely they could have found all this out before this happened. There was this, this rush, this falling over themselves to, well, bend the knee. Now, I was put in mind of incidents in the Bible. I, uh, I went to uh, an old school, old school, and uh, we did a lot of Bible stuff. And actually, this is something I found out afterwards because this wouldn't have been discussed in a girls' school in my time. But what happened during biblical times, and there's reference to it in the story of King David and, and his son, uh, who uh, led a rebellion. Uh, what happened was when a king of one country took over the other country, what he would do was, you know, because all the roofs were flat then, he would take all the concubines out onto the roof and either he or his men would uh, show they were men uh, to the concubines in full view of the assembled crowds, which just showed that the uh, that the king had been well and truly um, conquered, and then the conquering king would very often take the king out and do the same to him, uh, to just show exactly how he was. And that was a way of humiliating the, the government of the uh, area that had been taken over and showing that you were the boss now. Now, in, you know, that, that occurred to me. I'm sorry. This is very rude. It occurred to me when I saw the royal family's instant apologies to about this incident at Buckingham Palace. And I'm going to be rather crude here. So all of you people who, who don't like to see a lady being crude, then you better switch off now. It's almost as if our royal family, seeing the conquering hordes coming towards them, just thought they'd anticipate the whole thing and went out onto the roof of Buckhouse with a broom handle to get started before the hordes arrived. Okay, well... Yep, there you are. Till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.